Hi guys. So I wanted to, well, I wanted to document this. We'll see how it comes out. But um, I wanted to make a bracelet for my sister who has been asking for a specific one, um, like those stacking, stackable bead bracelets that you might see. They're, they're really trendy these days. And I am gonna, I plan on ordering her actually two of them that I, I won't be able to make myself just because of the nature of what they look like. I'll actually put a link to those in the description, but um, but I was like, you know what? I could probably make the other styles, the, the other styles that were just more like a simple bead bracelet, and I figured I'd give it a shot. I, I will let you know that I've been uh, hobby dabbling in bead making, bead jewelry, um, more like crystal bead jewelry, and then recently wire wrapping. So I, I have a little bit of experience. I've never done this type before, but I do have a little bit of experience. So I think that always helps if you've if you've worked with some of these tools before and, and worked with beads before. I think um, it's easier to grasp when you jump into other types of beadwork. But a little bit about the materials I'm going to be using. So uh, I actually did some of this wrong already, and I've been watching YouTube's and, and such to try to get up to speed. This. This cord that I got, I probably should have got just the, the clear plastic one, and the size I got is actually really large, so I'm having a hard time getting these beads to go even on it, and then it looks like what you'd probably want to do is ideally double, like you get the plastic one that's 0.5 millimeters, and then you double that up um, just to keep it strong. This is this is one millimeter, so um, anyways, I, I'm going to make it work just... Uh, I watch Project Runway too, so I'm all about making it work. Um, and so, yeah, so this is the, I don't know if you guys can see it, but this is the, the size and the black elastic wire that I'm using. I just got it at Michael's. It was, I think, $1.95. Uh, bead Landing is the style, but I wouldn't actually recommend this. And because I'm having a little bit issue getting these smaller beads onto it, I actually did a little hack, so I just took a lighter this is something I've done from sewing, I think, before, where you just kind of, because it's plastic, you can just kind of uh, do this and then bring it to a point, and it's a little bit firmer, so it's almost like a needle. But I will show you, if I do this successfully, I think I'll, I'll get that plastic um, the, the correct size, and I will show you another video where I actually use what's called a tiger tail. I have the, I have the material that I can make that with, but that's not going to work on this, because um, you have to double it. But I'll, I'll show you that, and that's like basically having like a little needle um, for threading your beads more easily. But anyways, so back to the materials. This is oh shoot. <laughs> uh, okay, I don't have beads everywhere. Um, hold please. Okay, so we had a little mishap, and as you can see, my beads are cleaned up and neatly in this little pile over here. Um, <laughs> So I was trying to show you the strands I bought. Um, I went to Michael's and I just got these, and I think they have them actually on Amazon too, but I just got these like bead landing. I guess it's the same company that makes the wire or the elastic. And um, I just got a few different assortments of glass beads. They were actually, I think, on sale. So the whole set of beads cost me about maybe 20 bucks. Um, like honestly in the long run it's probably worth it just to buy a bracelet if you're not into making it i i happen to like making them but, and i think they they look unique and you know handmade one of a kind but uh the materials that i ended up buying probably cost just as much as if i was going to buy the bracelet and now i have to make them so so yeah so that's up to you i mean it might be a little bit cheaper but you can see some of these are like this one's sparkly i think those are really pretty and these are like a lava bead, and so they have a good texture to them. And the green, I think, was a little bit more expensive. They had like different levels of expensiveness, if that's a word. And then I went to a bead store. So I, I have my own collection of beads. I'm kind of like a bead hoarder, but I also went to a bead store to get specific ones that I wanted. So I have some ideas in mind. This one, I think, was $13.95 $13 for this connector bead, and it's got... God knows if it's, I don't know, Swarovski or maybe um, cubic zirconia rhinestones inside of it. And let's see here, I'll just show you some of the, the ones that I picked. And I just, you get kind of a feel for what you want it to look like. And then you have to 
visualize it in your mind and then pick some beads that you think might might make that happen and sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't so it's kind of a crap shoot but I liked this one this is a connector connector bead and it's it looks to me to be reversible so you could do maybe gray and and black and since we're going for a black and gold theme here um, that one worked well that one I think was eight ninety five. The rest of these were like a dollar each and the little discs were like 30 cents each. So because I don't have a whole lot of gold beads, um, I typically prefer, oops, <laughs> hold please. Okay, we're back. Uh, so I'm kind of like Lucy in the, the chocolate factory. Um, I'm kind of a disaster when it comes to just about anything, but anyways, um, so yes, those are my, that one did not fall off the table, so I don't have to stop the video this time. But those are the beads I picked. And then this little package over here was a really good deal. It was five bucks for all of these. And I, I feel like I can repurpose a lot of these anyway, so I'll probably be using these and the beads on the table. And then I have my own, like I said, I, I kind of hoard beads, so I picked them up at random shows and things, but I have my own kind of trays. I have a whole tackle box here. Um, but some of these I think will work just because they do have a gold color. So uh, these I think are really pretty and if I was doing anything with silver I would be using these but I don't know if I'm going to be able to with this. So we'll kind of put this together and I don't lay out my beads. I don't have a process. So you'll see as we go through it. Um, I actually have something in mind so I do want to make a two strand using these and then have them connect with these in between. So let's see how that comes out. So the first thing I'm gonna do, and this is something I was surprised a lot of the videos, actually I don't think I saw it in any of the videos, they don't tell you to do this, but um, I read this on the, I think it was on the Beadalon website, where you're really supposed to stretch this out first. So that makes sense to me because uh, when, when you start wearing it, it's gonna get stretched out. So you don't want it to become so loose that it just falls off your wrist. So stretch them out. Um, to be perfectly honest, I don't know how much tension is going to break it. So I'm just trying to go kind of to where I feel that friction point. But um, I've, I've just been kind of continuously stretching them. And then you have to focus on the size. So I know that my sister, her wrist is um, a little bigger than mine and, and she wants it to be loose. So I'm gonna try to go I would try to go like, I don't know, I'm gonna try to go as, I don't want it to be too tight and I don't want it to be too big. So I'm just gonna kind of guess that it will probably be just a little bit longer than a full strand of these. So this is how I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna knot it off. And actually what I might do, cause you wanna leave a little extra for the knotting process from what I've seen. So I'm just gonna I'll do like a little knot that can be removed. And we're gonna go further down on it. Okay, so I just did like a little loop and then we will start putting our beads on. I might speed this video up depending on how awful it is to watch. kind of awful and this is going to take forever. Maybe what I will do is pause it and come back to you guys. Well, at least you can see the, the beginning stringing process. So some of these, I don't know, I don't know if I like these together. Yeah, that should be alright. Okay. So, I actually have another pack here. And what I think I'm going to do, a pack of strings, what I'm going to do is probably start another strand so that I can do them in parallel because I want to, I want to join them with these. So I'm going to get us to this point separately and I'll come back and do another video. Okay, so I'm back to where we were, and I'm about to put the gold band on. And just uh, 
just a quick point here is that uh, you want to make sure oops, you want to make sure that uh, that your beads are, are pretty much the same length so you don't want to have one that's coming out really far and then the other one is short that's just going to make it look kind of weird so um, this one I mean I think they're about even I, I could probably add one more to this side just to make them about the same size and the other thing is you want to go in increments that are I mean with these bracelets you can do whatever you want but I I like symmetry so um, I'll probably go in the same kind of I think these are about one inch your fingers about a one, one inch so they're about one inch chunks so I'll probably do it that way kind of consistently it doesn't mean you can't throw other things elements in there like you know thinking about these discs maybe or just break it up so that every other one it's a disc but you do want it to look visually appealing so you know however that it how, whatever that means to you so if you like kind of the uneven asymmetrical look you know go for it but this is just how I'm gonna do it and um, hopefully it comes out good okay so I'm gonna add another thing another piece and then I'm going to put both of them into this. Okay. So now this would be easier if I had a little clamp or something to hold these together. So now you can kind of see what that's going to look like. All right? And I think that looks pretty cool. So we'll keep going with that. And again, I'll probably forward this video so you may not hear me because it's just taking forever. Um, come on. Come on now. You guys can see it. You can see me fumble and look for the, the bead hole. The problem is everything is black. It's really, really hard to see the little bead hole and you need to see where the wire is going to it. I will say, I don't think this is hard. I think it's just a little bit time consuming and obviously a little bit frustrating, especially since this is my first time doing it. So. Uh, it's not like a perfected art yet, not that it ever would be with me. All right, I'm going to keep going and then I'll show it to you. Okay, so after a lot of deliberating on how I wanted the middle to look, and uh, you can see I made this little um, MacGyver <laughs> hacked uh, bracelet holder, so this little napkin holder here. Um, so anyways, I, I tried a bunch of different things. Some stuff looked okay, but I actually have other plans for these big metal pieces, so I wanted to use them with the other beads I had, so I decided to kind of create my own little middle here. And this is more of like an accent piece anyways, so I didn't really want it to have a focal you know, centerpiece, but I, I think it is important that you can, that it can stand on its own. So, uh, so I, I went ahead and I used these little washers and I like them kind of juxtaposed like opposite from each other. And then I put this, uh, rondelle bead in the middle and then, um, just put a couple other washers. So it almost makes like a flower, but the nice thing here is that it'll blend in great with other stacked beads and it's not going to, you know, overpower it, but it also does make it look kind of, you know, if you wanted to just wear it by itself, it also looks pretty. So that's what I think I'm going to go with. All right. All right, guys. So I'm pretty much done. I just need to start tying it off. And I just wanted to also point out that um, a few of these little chips, if you're using these little, I think they're called Jasper chips. Let's see. Yeah, you can see that. Can you see that? There it is. Um, so like this one, I don't know if you can see the little hole, but it basically is pretty much splitting. 
So I just wanted to be careful when I was beading these that I didn't use anything that looked like it was almost broken or broken. Um, just keep your eye out for those if you're using these tiny chips because you don't really want it to break because then you're going to have gaps in your bracelet. Um, also, it's going to be clinking against other bracelets, so that, you know they're kind of fragile. There's a chance they can chip, um, so you don't want to use any that have any signs of, of already getting there. But uh, but yeah, I think it came out really nice. Um, if you can see see how it looks, and uh, just need to tie it off. Now, one thing is it it may end up being a little big on her which is fine. I'd rather it actually be bigger. I think I could probably take it in if I needed to. Um, but the other thing I was thinking is it'll probably ride up high on her arm. So as your arm goes up, it's a little bit you know, bigger up towards the top. So anyways, I'm hoping it fits. Um, one thing that I did was I just used like a, I used another one of these and I just measured it and I made it a little longer. So I think, I think that should work, but we will find out. And I don't love the idea. I do have jewelry glue, but I don't love the idea of using it just because it's super smelly. So I'm going to actually try to not use it. Um, that is a technique I saw somebody was using, but let's see if it works. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is put that last one on there. When I tie these off, I want the knot to actually be hidden. It's not going to go back into these beads because they're too small. So I'm thinking it'll go back into this main ring. So just want to make sure I'm tying the right side to the right side. So let's just start with this one. All right, and I'm going to do it the way I saw, which is, I guess they call this a suture. Um, so it's a square knot, so you're just doing going over and under, and then you do the same thing again, so you have more of a knot there. And then you're going to pull that fairly tight. So I'm trying to keep my other one kind of separate so that I can... All right, let's see. Let's see what we think about that. Oh, I think that's pretty good. I'm going to do the same thing with this one, I'm going to do over and under, just like a regular knot, and then I'm going to do the same thing over again. Yep. Come on. Oh, this is hard to do. Okay. Over and under and over and under again. Let's try that. This one, I want to have this one on top. Tight. And, and then I'm going to start probably knotting them together. But that is pretty much our finished bracelet. So let's take a look and just make sure we like it. Um, I think I do. I actually think I kind of love it actually. It's funny because gold is not my color, but um, I think that looks really neat. So anyways, I can see my knot slipping, but that's fine. I needed to tighten both of these and put another one in. So hold on, please. Okay. Just trying to keep that tight. And I did read about you want to keep your knot taut so that so that these have a little bit of tension on them so that it kind of keeps the knot in place. I may end up having to do a little fabric glue. Or it's, I have like a Duco cement, I think it is. It's like a jewelry glue, fabric glue. You can you can use it on anything. But let's see where my knot is. Yeah, that knot is just not a good knot. All right, not liking this. Thought the knot would be pretty easy to do, but I'm just gonna do some regular knots. So what I watched people do is you do one. Two, three, then you go to the other side, pull it to the back and do one, two, three. But because I have these two knots, I'm going to do that for each one. They're probably going to get a little intertwined, which is fine. I actually don't really care as long as they 
keep the bracelet together and they don't fall apart. Um, and I could probably show you this better with the clear, at least the way I anticipated it going in my mind, which is not actually how it's going, which is oftentimes the case. But again, this is my first one of these, so hopefully I'll get better. And I think we should all learn together, so I wasn't going to shy away from making a video. But maybe you guys can use some of these mistakes and learnings and make something that you love. All right, let's see. Can you even see that? Yeah. Oh, there you go. I'll trim it off. I'm going to check my knots though, but I need to get closer up. Okay. All right, so this is the finished product and I'm really happy with how it came out. I actually might even make one for myself. Um, just to show you the, the way I finished off the end, I did trim and tighten the excess pieces and I stuffed them into this hole, so I don't know if you can see, but that little grommet right there, the knot is inside there. And I think it looks really cool. So this is how it looks on an arm. And if you stacked it, if I had other bracelets, I would stack it. There it is. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks, bye.